This video is brought to you today by Ghost Tags. This is my own company that I started because I wanted a glow in the dark air tag case. These things are awesome. You can stick them on your backpack, on your dog's collar, and you will be able to find it at night. We've got two colors, blue and green. They've got great reviews. Go check them out. Links to them down below. Now on to the video. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Slim and you're watching Slimothy TV. In this video, I'm going to do a quick what's on my iPhone video for you guys because I've been getting requests like crazy. It's the start of a new year. And yes, many of you have already messaged me asking me about the rearrangement of my apps because I typically keep my apps in the same positions for five to seven years. I hardly ever change them. I think I've only changed it maybe two or three times ever since I got my first iPhone, which was a really long time ago, like what, 15 years? Is it 15 years? I'm really old. I don't know. It's something like that. It's been a long time. Let's go over this design because as you guys can see, I only have one page of apps. But before we get into the apps, let's just talk about what's on my phone, like legitimately on it physically. There's nothing. There's no case on this phone right now. I was rocking the Andar case for quite a while, uh, maybe a month, which is probably the longest streak I've ever used a case. I really do like those cases. I decided I didn't want to use one for now, so I'm not using one. But that might change in the future. I review a lot of cases, and when I'm in review mode, I don't like to have a case on the phone because I have to keep taking them on and off. It's annoying. I do have a screen protector on here. You probably can't see it. It's one of the only ones that I recommend. It's Flow Lab. I paid with it, you know, with my own money. I did not get it as a review unit. Uh, I think it is probably the best one on the market right now. It was super easy to install. Again, no review on it because, well, this is the review. It's probably the best. So go check it out. I'll try to link it down below. On to the phone. So I got Safari, calendar, clock, camera. I keep those up there all the time. Photos, reminders, which I use constantly. That's how I organize my entire day, my life, everything. It's in reminders. Everything else goes into notes which I have there, settings, which I'm in all the time, Apple utilities. So these are just kind of the trash Apple apps that I don't really use, but that's that. Then over here, I've got food. So I rearranged my apps just to be everything on one page. So everything else is in a folder. So I've got some food places that I sometimes go to just so I have them on hand. I try to delete them and then see if I need them again uh, in the future because I don't like to have a bunch of clutter on my phone. Health, this one, I've got chronometer to track food. It's very nice to use health obviously. We've got Aura for the Aura ring right there. I've got Athletic, which is pretty cool. It's kind of like Aura, but for the Apple Watch. So you can use that and it can combine your data and make it actually usable. Next up, Natural Cycles. If you have a girlfriend, fiance, wife, you probably know what that is. Work Outdoors, which is awesome. If you have an Apple Watch, you can customize how the workouts look on the watch. It's really cool. My Chart, Fitness, and Christ Hospital. So nothing really to see there. And then I've got My Mojo Health, which is for if you want to track your blood sugar and ketone levels. If you're into that type of health tracking, you can buy one of those little finger pricks off Amazon and use this app. It tracks everything. It's really cool. It's not just for diabetics. It's for anyone that just wants to track their blood sugar and ketone levels and stay as healthy as possible. Next, I've got UHC and Everly Well, which is like at home blood tests and stuff. Again, for health, if you want to track and see how your health is progressing. I've got Travel, which is a pretty cool folder. I've got Flighty, which is my favorite flight app of all time. Big shout out to the developer of that app. It's really good. I use it on all my flights. Then I got Delta, Airbnb, Priority Pass for lounges and Lounge Buddy to help find those lounges as well. Aerolo for when you're abroad. It's great to easily be able to get a local SIM card just with the app. You can literally just pay like 10 bucks or 20 bucks and get a bunch of data on your phone without having to go to a sketchy shop. You just do it through the app. Hopper, which is for flights and hotels. Then I got the airports app. Now that's pretty cool. It actually shows you a 3D design of a bunch of different airports. It's really cool. Wonderlog, which can give you ideas of things to do at different places when you are traveling. Turbulence, which I've never actually used. Uh, I think the idea is you set your phone on the table tray in front of you on a plane and it'll tell you what the turbulence is. I've never used it. By the way, pro tip, if you are ever in turbulence and it scares you, lift your feet off the floor of the aircraft. It'll minimize the sensations quite a bit. That's just a pro tip. You're welcome. Next up, station weather and aero weather. Those are for uh, airports. If you want to see the weather, if you're a nerd, Expedia, Verbo, and Hotels.com. They're all kind of one now, and you can use cash between them if you earn rewards and stuff. Flight Plan Go, which again is plain nerd stuff. In route is really cool. I use it to track the curviness and the elevation of a drive. So if I have a really long drive coming up, I'll use that to kind of get an idea of the roads. If I'm on a really long 16 hour road trip by myself, I wanna know what's coming up and that's a really cool app. Next up is Highway Weather, which can tell you the weather on the trip as you're going along or before you go. So if you have a 16 hour drive and you wanna see what the weather's gonna be like, you know, midway through, this is a good app to have because you might not know where you're gonna be at a specific time. That app can kind of figure it out for you. Then I got flight board and marine traffic. That's for tracking ships. Next up, I've got utilities. Now this is one of my most important folders. I've got one password, speed test and proton mail. I use those all the time. Find my, also use it all the time. 
Amplify for the Amplify Alien router. It's one of the best routers out there. I hope they update it soon to Wi-Fi 6E or Wi-Fi 7 though, because it is getting a little long in the tooth. But if you're looking for a no-nonsense router, like seriously, Amplify Alien, check them out. Scanner Pro to scan documents, Duke Energy, Amica, that's insurance, AltaFiber, that's for internet. And then here we've got YouTube Studio, Sundial, Proton VPN. So let me just quickly talk about Sundial. That's the widget you see up here. And it tells me when the sunset and sunrise is based on my location. Super awesome app. Very cool developer as well. I messaged him a couple times and he was very helpful. Backtrack, I found one of those blood alcohol testers on Amazon for like, I don't know, 80 bucks. So I decided to just grab it. Haven't actually used it yet because I rarely drink. But the next time I do, I'm going to try that out. And if it's cool, I'll show you guys on a video. But like I said, I almost never drink. So I never really have an opportunity to use it. Sports alerts, that's cool. If you want to see uh, live activities for a sports score, that's why I have that. Spotify, which is my music player of choice. YouTube, Garmin Connect for my Garmin Phoenix watch. Wonderfind, which is cool to find Bluetooth devices around you if you want to find like a rogue air tag or something. AdGuard Pro, which we have a video on if you want to see how to block ads on the iPhone. AdBlock Pro and AdGuard Pro both work great for that. Wi-Fi Man, if you are a Wi-Fi nerd and want to look into your network a little bit. Google Translate, Verizon, Wi-Fi Sweet Spots. This is a hidden gem. You can easily find what the speeds are around your house and kind of troubleshoot different spots with that app. Very nice app. Synology Drive, DS File, and DS Finder. That's for Synology NAS. If you know, you know. If you don't, well, don't worry about it. Flipper for Flipper Zero. Really cool hacking device or just tinkering device, I should say. Bible Drops, which is a language learning app. Photos Mobile, which is Synology. HP Sprocket for printing photos. Laser Academy, if you want to practice dry firing. Uh, if you don't want to actually go to the range for whatever reason. Maybe you got snowed in and you can't make a range day to go uh, practice firing your guns. You can use Laser Academy. It's pretty cool, but I rarely use it. I need to get into that a little more. Now, these last three here, these are for my drone. So DJI Fly, Air Control, and UAV Forecast. Now I've got Network Analyzer, which is for network stuff. The Score, which is for sports scores. FedEx, Starwalk 2, which is cool if you are an astronomy nerd. Facetune Basic, not sure why I still have that. I should probably delete it. Oh, I think I know why I have it because they're trying to uh, push a subscription with the other one. So I wanted to keep this one on my phone just in case they remove it. Rivo for one-time passcodes. Fantastical, which is how I have this widget right here. Um, it is really cool. This one, by the way, is windy, but we'll get there. People ask about those all the time, so I wanted to let you guys know. Then I got baking soda, which is for Safari, watching videos and stuff. Homeroom planner, vinegar, which is also with baking soda for clearing out ads and stuff on Safari. Noir, which makes your websites black or dark mode on Safari. Stop the madness, gets rid of ads and other crap trackers on Safari. Night Sky, which is a rival to Starwalk 2. They're both great. My TSA, if you want to quickly check and see if something's allowed to fly, you can use that. GoPro Quick, pretty self-explanatory there. Pop Frame just makes your screenshots have the iPhone around it. It's kind of cool. Next DNS, must have app. Again, we've got a whole video on the channel going over it with ad blockers. Simple Login, which is tied into ProtonMail to make alias addresses so you don't have to give people your real email address. It's awesome. Acres to see who owns plots of land around you. Lock Launcher, which is for lock screen launcher. I don't even use it. Quick Scan is like Scanner Pro to scan documents. UPS. Black Magic Cam, which is really powerful. I just don't use it. But if you take a lot of video with your phone, you might want it. USPS Mobile to manage PO boxes. Merlin Bird ID can help you ID birds. It's kind of cool. App Raven for finding different apps that drop in price. And Food Shiner, I don't really know what that is. I think it's just to inventory your food. All right, next up we have shopping. So we got Amazon, Lazada, AliExpress, eBay, The Cut, which is a haircut app. Uh, if your barbers use it, you can uh, use that to book an appointment. Very convenient. Kroger, Walgreens, uh, top up BTC, which is just for phones in the Bahamas, Home Depot, and that's it. So those are my shopping apps. Then here I've got smart home apps. Now these are pretty cool because I like to have some smart home devices, but not too many. So I've got Eufy security. I've got like $3,000 worth of cameras all around both of my houses. Keep those things locked down pretty well. Akara is really cool. I don't like that it's owned by, I think Xiaomi. I think they're the owners of Akara and it's just a Chinese brand, but they have some really cool cheap stuff for door sensors and stuff. So I highly recommend looking at them. Daikin for home thermometer, sensor push for thermometer sensors, Aeronet Home for CO2 monitoring, the Home app, RoboRock for like a Roomba, you know, like an automated vacuum. These things are awesome. LG ThinQ for washer and dryer, Inkbird for the other CO2 monitor, Eve for an air quality monitor, Casa for smart home switches. V-Sync's great if you have a humidifier, you can hook it up if you have one of their special app connected ones or for an air purifier. I have both of those are great. EcoCube for testing radon in your house. Uh, they're just a tiny little cube. It's like 150 bucks and it can monitor your radon and make sure it doesn't go too high. AirThings can do a lot of that all in one. So you can check those out as well. I like both of them, 
but I like to use them for different things. Matt Motion, I am looking at getting an automated Roomba-like lawn cutter. I have a pretty big yard at one of my houses and I don't really want to cut all of it and I don't want to hire someone. One of those robots is like 2,500 bucks. Seems like a good deal if you never have to cut your lawn again. I might check those out, maybe do a video on them. Maybe they'll send us one for review. That'd be pretty cool. Next up is home controller. This was like a hundred bucks. I don't think it's necessarily worth it. I kind of regret the purchase. iDevices, which is for managing smart devices. Wise for wise cameras, if you have those. HomePass to store your HomeKit codes from all of your smart devices. I currently use controller, but I also bought this app just to try it. I don't really use it, but you should have one of those apps to store those home passes. Home devices, I forget what that does. I think it just tells you different things you can do with your devices. And Home Connect, that's for a smart dishwasher. All right, so that's smart home. Let's look at social. I don't have too much in here, just Discord, Facebook, Instagram, Signal, X, Snapchat, Reddit, Telegram, Facebook, between TextNow and WhatsApp. Any questions, let me know down below, but I'm not going into those. Money, just some banking apps, credit card apps. Copilot's really cool if you wanna track finances. 80 bucks a year, kind of steep, but you do get the Mac app as well, which is kind of cool. Robinhood, Vanguard, PayPal. Weeble, Credit Karma, XE for looking up money conversions. Wise for actually transferring money to other countries. Seriously, probably the cheapest way to send money to anyone abroad. Very good application. Uh, privacy for masking credit card numbers, Venmo, and then some benefits apps, cash app, and that's it. So not too much in there. Weather, I really like my radar for the actual radar. Tempest for my local home weather station. Ambient weather for my other weather station. Windy, which I mentioned is on my lock screen here. It can tell you kind of a week's worth of weather right there. Very cool. AccuWeather is pretty nice, but I don't like how they're pushing subscriptions. I'm pretty much de-subscriptifying my whole life, so I'm getting rid of as many as possible. So I'm not obviously going to pay their fees. Radar scope is pretty cool. Zoom Earth is great for pretty much everywhere, but especially if you're abroad, it's very nice to see the weather radar on there. It's very high def. Radar Omega is like radar scope, except not quite as good and a little bit more deceptive with their marketing, I think, but that's just my opinion. Quake Feed is cool if you want to see earthquakes. Hurricane Pro for tracking hurricanes. Weather bug, river levels, if you want to check river levels around you, set up alerts in case it goes too high. Fly forecast and turbulence forecast, uh, if you want to take a look at those for when, before you fly. Allergy plus, storm shield, carrot. Carrot weather app's pretty good. Uh, it's what I use on my Apple Watch here. That's what does the weather right across there. Pretty cool. Also, we have a video on carrot. If you want to check it out, it's very popular. Tide guide is pretty cool if you want to check out tides wherever you're going and then the Apple weather app. Now, real quick, before I go to the games folder, I want to show you this one. I have about eight different uh, widgets right here that I can scroll through. I'm not going to because it's going to dox myself, but they have my different weather locations. I've got the windy widgets up here that have the full map and everything like that. It's really cool. Got a couple of nice little shortcuts here, night and night alarm. I use this pretty much every night. So night just sets the brightness all the way down and turns off Bluetooth. And night plus alarm does the same thing, but sets my alarm as well. I got battery widget and calendar widget. Anyways, onto the games folder. All I play is Brawl Stars, Disc Drive and Disc Drive 2. I hop on Growl just to say hi to people. And then I have test flight. Planes, now this I am in all the time. Flight Radar 24, Open ADSB, Plane Finder, Flight Aware, Radar Box, Live ATC, and Skyglass. Those are my plane tracking apps. Driving, so I use a Valentine 1 Gen 2 for radar detection from police. So I have V1 driver hooked up with that. I also use V1 connection to get software updates for the actual radar detector. VOFO for my dash cams. Google Maps and Waze. Waze is a must have for every drive just to know where the cops are. Apple Maps, eh, I never use it. Google Maps I use sometimes. Gas Buddy, Carfax, Car Care, it is what it is. V1 Companion, not as good as V1 Driver in my opinion. So that's that. And lastly, we have Yucca, which I haven't figured out where to put it yet. It seems like a pretty good app to scan different items and see if they have harmful ingredients in them. Pretty cool stuff. App Store, Mail, Phone, Messages, that's it. That's all I got on my phone. This is a long video, but hopefully it gave you some insight on some pretty cool apps that you guys can test out and try and see if you like them. So that's all I got for this one, guys. If you liked it, hit with a big thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.